We can move forward. Do we have a quorum? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, uh, uh, members available are Ms. Mood and Huggins? Yes. Very good. Um, can we uh, make a motion to adopt the minutes? I so move. Second. Uh, anybody else on the line um, other than um, Ms. Jernigan? The staff, we have uh, Mr. DeChance, we have uh, Tanisha Given, Eric Harris, and Pam Bino Reed. And then, of course, okay, very John. good. Okay, very good. I will ask uh, Mr. Uh, Ando to please uh, move forward um, with the Ando um, report. Yes, uh, Ms. Hoggins. Uh, I will turn this over to uh, Mr. DeChamps. Uh, he'll lead items 4A, four, uh, 4B, four and 4C uh, with uh, his uh, operations team. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving forward with uh, item 4 discussion and action items, uh, we, uh, we have uh, Corey Gagnon, uh, the GM. He's on the, uh, he's on, the uh, on the line. He'll be updating uh, on uh, operations and testing. Also, uh, I'll be talking about uh, testing, uh, executive order, and the, uh, the Columbia Mass uh, ordinance. And uh, then we'll get an update on vehicle cleaning. We'll get an update uh, there from uh, Mr. Gavin also, and also to uh, an update from the comment side from Ms. Tanisha Gibbons. And uh, as far as the update on food delivery, uh, uh, Mr. Gagnon will give us an update uh, on that also. So first of all, I'll just turn it over to Mr. Gagnon for him to update us on uh, COVID-related uh, operational issues. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Deschamps. Yes, sir. Can, can we make sure that we stay COVID related and not get to the point where service standards, I just want to make sure that we don't bridge over to that because we have that committee meeting in the next hour. So uh, if staff and everybody would understand that this is a COVID related meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, Mr. Gagnon. Uh, thank you, Leroy. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. Um, COVID-related, um, I, I, I don't know how many of you came into the building today, but we originally had two different temperature scanners. We had one um, at the TART office and one over um, in front of our fixed route office. And what we did um, is we actually kind of did a partition and moved one of those um, temperature scanners. And also, as well. Um, directly in front of the two doors to enter the building. So um, you have no choice but to, to face that camera as you come in, um, uh, grab your temperature, and uh, see, uh, it'll let you know if you're wearing a mask. So that's an update that we did for COVID um, since our last meeting. Um, but before, um, we have had no uh, instances of COVID uh, crisis um, since our last meeting. And uh, that would be it um, for COVID at this point. Corey, I apologize. Are, are you on speaker? Uh, I'm on my laptop in my office. Oh, okay. It's a little broken, garbled. Um, Ms. Mu, do you have any questions? Um, no, no specific questions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ando, please proceed. Uh, this is Mr. Shams uh, back. Uh, just an update uh, on our testing. Uh, uh, we didn't have a testing session since the last uh, meeting, uh, but we do have our next uh, COVID-19 testing uh, scheduled for Tuesday, December 1st, and then Wednesday, December 2nd our next monthly uh, covert testing for staff and, and employees. And also too, uh, as I mentioned in the last meeting and talking with Lovelace uh, Family Medicine, they will also be here in January 
February and March. So uh, those dates, and I confirmed it again uh, with them. They said if something comes up, they will let us know, but they have uh, those months on the uh, book also. And if we need to do any adjustments with dates or times, uh, I will work with them uh, to get that done. Do we have the results of the testing that's happened since our last meeting? Uh, yes, there was uh, there was all, all negative. Uh, one thing I, I've mentioned at this point, and um, I know uh, we discussed it some in the uh, last COVID-19 meeting, uh, we were trying to get a little bit more uh, data, uh, and I was working uh, with the HR uh, person with RETP Dev. And uh, we'll probably have a little bit more detail in the next meeting. I know we were trying to get uh, the totals as far as more of a breakout by position and uh, in talking with the HR person. Yes. Uh, uh, one thing we found out is um, with the reporting that I gave her, those uh, results were given out to the employees. So when she looked back as far as compiling those by position, she had some but not all. So what I'm going to do is go back and get all the results from our August, from, from for the month of August, and also for September and for October, where we can give you a better breakdown as far as maybe by position. But I can tell you, uh, going back and looking at that, for our, our August session, we had a total of 49 tests that were done. For September, we had a total of 55 that were done. And for October, we had a total of 42 that was done. And, and that's out of a, what, what a total number possible? Well, that's, if you look at the staff here, upstairs the comment, and if you look at RETP Dev, uh, just kind of overall from the operators and TCS, you're probably talking, and Corey, you could probably help me define this a little bit more. You're probably talking, what, 175 plus people? Yes, I would. Yes, I would confirm that 175 plus is probably. I was just getting the denominator. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you're kind of looking at that, uh, we're probably running 20, 25 percent, uh, uh, and that's just kind of me just kind of ballparking it for for the number of employees that are being tested. Uh, so far through this process uh, of Lovelace Family Medical, we haven't had any positive results. We did have some with uh, staff or, or with employees, but those were, I think, identified from an outside testing source. And, and do we have anybody um, right now either on, um, on quarantine or? Uh, not that I know of, uh, Corey, I don't think you, uh, you don't have anybody out. We haven't had any updates from you guys, so I figured we don't have anybody out or on quarantine. Corey? No, sir. I'm sorry. I apologize. I was on mute. No, we do not have anyone out on quarantine. So we don't have anybody out right now. Uh, 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 again, okay, so, so uh, Mr. DeShamps and uh, Mr. Ando, um, uh, in the sake of uh, pro uh, priority and transparency, uh, can you tell me how we can make sure that the public understands what we're doing? And I don't know if um, it may be service standards that need to go into this, but can you tell me, Mr. Ando, how you feel about how we need to make sure that the public knows that what we're doing? Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Vice Chairman, can you say that last comment? What I'm saying is, I just want to make sure. I want to make sure that individuals know what we're doing, and to ensure that we are um, being transparent on our delivery services and our drivers and passengers. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chairman, we have uh, we have a public outreach campaign that's talking about all of our efforts. Uh, we've been in several national magazines, and the local media has done articles on all of our efforts. So we've been fairly transparent. We have a dedicated web page on the Commons website 
that talks about all of our actions, including the board adopted COVID-19 operational policy. So uh, yes, we, we've been as transparent as we can be. And, and we're still letting the public know when we get a positive. Yes, in accordance with the new communications policy that the committee adopted. Um, additionally, we do have a call with RATB Dev on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we do discuss uh, COVID related 19 operational activities, including bus overcrowding, um, if there's any new cases, um, any uh, clean or any new mechanisms that we can do to keep people safe. And then Leroy and I participate on an APTA call every two weeks with other transit operators across the country just to see what is going on and getting best practice information. So I believe we're being as very transparent and the media has reported our, that we're doing the same. Ms. Moo, do you have any uh, questions on this issue? I do not. Ma'am? Ma I'm sorry, you say yes or no? I, I, I do not. I do not. You do not. Okay. Mr. Okay. Ando, um, thank you for the report. And uh, Mr. Ando, would you please um, give us a little bit more information if you feel that needs to be on this issue? Um, I, I don't feel there's anything more, but I'll, I'll turn over to the chance and he'll keep going down the agenda. That's okay, Mr. Vice Chairman? Okay, very good. Next item, please. Okay. Uh, just also want to mention about the governor's executive order. Uh, that was extended on November 8th for another 15 days, so the, uh, that's still in effect. Did, did anything change in that, or just, just extended just, the time? Yes, just extended the time. Okay. Uh, and also, to the city, uh, city of Columbia mass ordinance, ordinance uh, they did extend that for another uh, 61 days. Uh, and also to uh, the city emphasize uh, as far as mass requirements that if you're standing in line waiting even outside that you you are required to have on, on a mask even waiting in situations like that. So still uh, uh, also to they uh, I think increase the uh, fine uh, from $25 up to $100 that you could be fined. But those are the major uh, changes to the City of Columbia mass ordinance. And, of course, our COVID-19 policy is still in effect, so we're still practicing social distancing. Uh, riders are required to have on masks, so all of that is uh, all of that is still still in in place and, and being uh, forced out there uh, on in our service areas. Well, what I read in the news um, says that the city is going to be much more assertive in terms of um, enforcing that mask policy too. That they. Yeah, and, um, and I'm quite sure, well, and I know I do, and Smoot, I know you've mentioned, uh, I watch it daily, you know, the number of uh, cases here uh, in our, our state, and uh, I know they fluctuate, but basically they're averaging over 1,000 uh, exactly. again. I think yesterday exactly. they have been like around 1,250, so still a big concern, but I think more than anything is if you look at from a... Uh, a a nation standpoint and where we are, it, it, it's alarming when you have what almost, uh, I think yesterday maybe 160,000 new cases. And as we go into the, uh, the holidays, that's got to be a big focus uh, of ours as far as safety and, and what we do and looking at all the recommendations for, uh, for, for families getting together for Thanksgiving. And well, that'll and be and concerned. With colder weather, people spend more time indoors. Yes, yes. And and other factors. And um, that, that's a big concern. And also, to uh, uh, like I said, our next uh, testing session is uh, December 1st and 2nd, right, right after uh, the Thanksgiving weekend. So, um, again, just keeping focus on that and having that to offer to, to our employees. Now, that's all that I have. Um, Corey, uh, did you want to give us an update on uh, vehicle cleaning? Yes, thank and, you. And, and please, and please, wait, wait, wait one second. Please make sure that we are looking at internal or situations that are based on COVID because we're going to do the service uh, service standards. It's going to be the same uh, question. So please, based on time, 
please make sure that we look at COVID issues. Uh, then, I, then, I'll, then I'll just leave you with, you know, we, we are making sure that we audit the buses um, daily, um, even again after the service line sends in those reports. And uh, we go out and make sure that the hand wipes are on them as reported and that, that they are wiped down and uh, they have been disinfected. I'll, I'll leave it there. Ms. Moo. That's okay with me. That's fine. Okay, very good. Uh, next item, Mr. Ando. Uh, um, the next item is update on food delivery. Uh, Corey, I don't know whether uh, are you going to do that or Jim's on the phone or you have that information? Uh, usually that's Mr. Sanchez and he just stepped out for a second. He had to go grab a phone call. Um, so I don't have the numbers because he has them in his hand. Um, I will let you know that food, can deliver, can, food delivery is continuing. Um, I don't believe there's been an uptick uh, since last week. Um, and uh, Jem is uh, still doing it um, every week as required. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, you have the right chairman. Okay, um, would you please tell me um, how we're going to measure what that gentleman just said? Because it, that doesn't sound like a report to me. Yeah, we uh, uh, we need the, we do need the data to demonstrate the on the food delivery. We measure that monthly when we do get the monthly reports from RATP Dev. Uh, we are still waiting for that detailed data from them. So at the present time, I, I can't uh, honestly measure it effectively um, until we get those uh, detailed figures. Uh, we'll work with our ATP Dev to ensure that we have that data so it can properly be presented in a future meeting. Okay. I'm going to send it to us. And, and it's very, can, very important. Do, uh, very important. Let me let me say this. Hold on. Let me let me say this. If we were. Um, if we are expecting information and it comes from um executive board to as a vice chair i'm speaking from a vice chair uh, standpoint if we if we're expecting information then i would like to have that information and the individual to lead the room uh without presenting that kind of information that that is not acceptable so therefore i need to be in the situation where to say i need information based on these committees because I'm going to be asked by other board members and please have individuals in the room to give the information when it's needed. Understood. We'll work with our ATV desk to ensure that. Ms. Moo, do you have any um, concerns? Well, I, I stay concerned about this pandemic, but I'm not concerned about anything that um, that we've covered on the agenda. I, I think we've covered all the, the things that we're doing, and um, and I just want to urge us to keep being very um, diligent about that because um, at a time of a upswing in the in the pandemic, this is, this is no time to ease up on any of the things that we are we're doing to assure safety. Thank you. Uh, next item, Ms. Ando. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Huggins, uh, that's all the items that we have listed on the agenda today. So it would be Very good. Next item five for adjournment. If no other is, is, that, is that Mr. Ando? Is that Mr. Ando talking? That's, uh, that's Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Very good. Ms. Ando. Any other um, questions? No, sir. Um, I would ask, though, if we can uh, defer the November 27 meeting to uh, December December 11, unless any urgent matters occur, since uh, November 27 will be the day after Thanksgiving. Ms. Moo, how do you feel about that? that? Yes, yeah, that's agreeable to me. Yeah, okay, then I'm we'll, sorry, we'll say, again, uh, say, say again, Ms. Moo. Say again, Ms. Moo. Say again. That's agreeable to me. Do you need any, do you need any, any formal information? Um, yeah, let's do that for just a record. 
Okay, well, I make a motion that we um, delay the November 27th meeting that's on the day after Thanksgiving and leave that until December 11th. Thank you. Uh, I agree also. Uh, call a vote, Mood and um, Ms. Mood. Yes. Yeah. And Huggins, yes. Mr. Ando and staff, thank you for this opportunity to, to get information. Um, also with Razel, I appreciate the information and we're gonna move forward, but let me make a point uh, more than anything else that when we have to ask for reports, I really want staff and contractual staff to be available to give those reports. Definitely noted, uh, sir. Thank, thank, thank you for you. Uh, your time, appreciate it. And Ms. Mood, you gonna motion to adjourn? I'm so moved. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.